I'm a yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Metastellar YouTube channel. My name is Maria Korlov. I'm the editor here at Metastellar. And yes, I'm a human. Not an AI. Okay. As you can tell by the fact that my camera is doing wonky things. Proof of humanness. Okay. So I'm going to talk about AI today. Specifically, why you should, if you're going to be using an AI image generator, you should use Adobe Express instead of Midjourney or Dolly 3. But you might say, but Midjourney and Dolly 3 are so good and Adobe Express is so bad. Uh, okay, that's true, but let's, let, let, hear me out. So Dolly 3 and all the Dollies and Midjourney and pretty much all the other big image generates out there, including Stable Diffusion and all its variants, are trained on scraped data from the internet gathered without artists' explicit permission. OpenAI, which makes Dolly, all the Dollies, um, and Stable, the company behind Stable Diffusion, say they will let artists opt out at some point in the future. Midjourney has said nothing at all about this. Opting out is a is a nice half measure, but it's a half measure. Artists should not be used to train AIs that put them out of business unless the artist gives their permission and hopefully gets paid for it. There is one company, one major company that is both using only permissioned art and has sent out its first payment to artists. Yes, Adobe that big giant of Photoshop and all the other, you know, video and image editing apps that I never use because they're way too expensive and bloated and big giant company and I don't like them. They were the first to come out and say that their AI is trained only on fully licensed images and they pay their artists on top of that, they're putting the money where their mouth is in the sense that if they get into any legal trouble, specifically if their customers get into any legal trouble, they will pay their bills. So Adobe is indemnifying its business customers against any potential copyright issues. So they're, they've got a lot at stake in doing this right. And... I hate to say this because they're a giant corporation and normally I wouldn't, um, I'm for the little guy, but in this particular case, if you want to use AI generated images that are safe from copyright infringement claims and where the artists are actually being compensated, go with Adobe Express. Um, as I mentioned, the image quality sucks, but it's a brand new platform. Um, Dolly and OpenAI and Midjourney have a year head start on them. So of course their images aren't going to be great. The hands are going to be weird. Their faces are going to look creepy. Yeah. Okay. So give, I'm, I'm going to give all that to them, but they're safe for commercial use. You can, they're licensed to use on book covers and in your marketing materials. And if you can figure out a way to get decent images out of them, you can use them to make actual commercial stuff. So the, if you're gonna be using AI to create images, this is the one I recommend. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use Midjourney or Dolly 3 internally for your own inspiration or to give some examples of the kind of thing you're going for when you would work with a book cover designer. Um, but I wouldn't put them on any commercial works as of yet until they clean up their copyright issues. Until then, um, Adobe Express, which uses the Firefly um, AI uh, image model. Firefly costs five bucks a month. Adobe Express costs 10 bucks a month, but you get more than twice as many images with Adobe Express. With Adobe Express for 10 bucks a month, you get 250 images, uh, image generations, which is pretty good. On the free plan, you get 25 a month of image generation, plus there's no watermark. Um, and you also get the composition tools. So you can actually make a cover in there. 
So I'm going to show you quickly how to do that. Um, but before we get into that, one more objection that people have about AI art, and that is that you cannot copyright AI images. And yes, this is correct. But it is also the case that most cover designers will use stock photos on their covers. You could not copyright them either. And here I'm going to show you a few big names with the same exact cover illustration on them from a stock photo site. So, um, so we got J.D. Robb, Ian Rankin, um, Kelly Armstrong, Jonathan Kellerman, Joyce Carol Oates, and John Stanford with their covers all showing the same photograph of the body on the beach. And this happens a lot. I'm going to link the article here that this image came from. They have a lot of different examples of stock photos showing up on multiple book covers. That's not going to happen to you if you use AI generated images because anybody can generate their own AI images and they're different every time. Uh, I mean, you know, th there's ways you can do, you can things you can do to get the same image, but it's really, really hard. Okay, so let's get into this. Adobe Express. Um, this is the sign-in page. You go to new.express.adobe.com. Um, I log in with Google because it just makes life easier for me. But you can also sign up with an email or with Facebook or your Apple ID. And then you get into this home screen here. Um, and um, I recommend that you click on custom size and you type in whatever size you're looking for for your image for book covers you go with 1600 wide by 2400 high and you click on create new project and here we are this is a new project here with adobe express this looks a lot like canva but worse um it's not as easy to use as Canva. The free options are leave a lot to be desired. Um, Canva also has an AI image generator, but it is awful. And I have not seen anything there at all about license terms. So if you care about respecting copyright, uh, this is the one you go with. So to get an AI image on here, you click on media. Click on text to image, this gray button right here. We're going to make it a portrait. So that's a vertical image, which will fit slightly better to our book cover. And then we type a description of what we want. So I'm going with spaceship battle in space, high resolution, intricate book cover illustration, black space background. Um, notice that I'm putting in a lot of stuff that you don't have to put in in mid-journey because mid-journey images just look good. If all if you all you have to do is put spaceship battle in space, and mid-journey will make it look great. Dolly three will make it look great. Um, Adobe will not make it look great. Maybe in a year it will look great. Right now you need to put a lot of stuff in there. Like for example, you want to you might want to put dramatic lighting, dramatic lighting, uh, beautiful image image, awesome composition, you you know, lay, layer it on, okay? Um, and then you hit generate, and then you wait for the results to come in. It, it will give you quite a few results. And then the results will show up in this box right here. Let me make that a little bit bigger to fill up the whole space here. And there we go. Uh, where did it go? So it gives us four images to start with. And they're not all that bad. Um, and if I don't like any of those four, I can just keep hitting the load more button and it will keep generating more images. So this one's pretty cool. I like this one. Eh, not bad. Any one of these could be fine on a book cover, uh, especially if it's a short story or if it's replacing a handmade cover 
that maybe you made with Microsoft Word or something using a free template that looks awful. Um, so yeah, um, let, let's go with this one. So now what you do is you put text on it, add your text, and we're gonna put um, space battle. And we're gonna make that, um, make that white. And we're gonna make that bigger. So it's, it's the controls are similar to Canva, but worse. And uh, you, you put you put it up here. Um, now um, let's let me pick a a sci-fi font in here. I'm gonna type in tachyon. Look at that. Now it's looking more like space battle. Look at that. Look at that. I'm going to make it centered. That's a line button center. And I'm going to give it some shadow. And shadow, classic shadow. Let's make it black. There we go. Space battle, right? Not so bad. Um, here's a quick tip for to make your book cover titles look more like um like book covers is you look with tighten up the line spacing and you can play with the with a with the word spacing here and then at the bottom i'm going to add more text here one Add text. Indy Writer Jones. I'm going to make that one. Give us new way and make that white. Put this on the bottom here. Look at that. And again, I'm going to stretch this out. Look, see. See like that and center it. Now look at this. Look how fast I just made a book cover that, you know, you could totally see this on a book cover somewhere, right? Look at this. All right. So, um, okay, I'm gonna put in the links below some of uh, the font size that I used, the prompt that I used to create this image, um, the text that I used here, and on your business. Look, that, that took what, what, five minutes to make? Less? It's, it's a really great deal. This is great for placeholder covers, like I said, for sh short story covers for marketing images because you can you know take pieces of it resize it um and this is also good for uh draft images that you can take and show to a cover designer you can say this is what i want but like make it better uh let me give you some ideas of of some uh, this is more pictures that i made with um with adobe express Again, the prompts to all of these are going to be in the description box below. Here's a few more. Again, these are made with Adobe Express. I mean, they make for great fantasy covers. The, the prompts to these are in the description box below. And here are some where I played around a little bit more with the covers and special effects. For example, with this one here, make that a little bit bigger. So with this one here, the font is Tachyon. Again, same as before. I created an image. Inzi Brider Jones is headline Gothic ATF. And then here I put um, this kind of gray stripe thingy on it. And you find that under elements, under design assets for 
um, design assets, maybe overlays. No, gradients. It's it's in there. You can find a whole bunch of stuff that you can play with. And the one problem that I have with Adobe Express is that everything costs money. See all these little all these little um crowns next to things. Um so here here you go. Here's a bunch of different gradients you can layer on top of the image. So here off to the side is where the, the gradients are. So you can move them around. See? It, we, this Now this layer thing is actually nicer than with Canva. So I like that better. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. All right. So all sorts of fun stuff you can play around with. Um, but a lot of it costs money. So, so here's like some more like examples of images you can generate and text effects you can play with. This is text effect um, is um, where you could actually uh, attach a generated AI generated texture on top of your text. So here, the texture is molten gold, which is which is actually kind of cool. So this is something that Adobe Express does that nobody else does that I've seen yet, which is, and it's actually a very, very cool effect. Uh, for this one, I used a third party text generator, but the image was created here in Adobe Express. So as you can see, Adobe Express does a very bad job with faces. I wasn't lying when I said it couldn't do faces. But for like abstract kind of images, it does okay. Uh, here the titles were generated with a third party site and I just uploaded it. For um, creatures that, you know, the accuracy isn't that important because nobody knows what it's supposed to look like anyway. Um, it's not that bad. On, make it bigger. There we go. So see, it's not so bad. Okay. So there you go. Um, if you want some more inspiration for prompts, go to firefly.adobe.com slash gallery. Firefly is the name of the AI model behind it. And there's all these pictures that they have that were created with this model. And if you click on one of them, um, it will show you what the prompt was. So the prompt here is a busy frozen space city where all the cars are shaped like squid. It's not bad. So now they put it in widescreen format but you can change it to something like portrait format and hit generate and it will turn it into a portrait shape. Um, and again, uh, the Firefly basic plan is free. And then once you run out of credits, you can, um, you can uh, buy five bucks a month and you can buy more. So these are, these are not bad. So I recommend that, uh, check out the gallery. They keep adding new stuff on there. Uh, and then if you wanna make special text effects, um, cooltext.com has a whole bunch of fonts that you can pick from. So like, for example, they have a bunch of magic fonts. I mean, a ton of magic fonts. Like with Adobe Express, pretty much all the fonts you have to pay for. And I was very, very disappointed with the collection of fonts, given that they're Adobe, you know, you think that fonts would be something that they can do. Um, it, it's ad supported. Um, and then you just, you pick an effect to load onto the font, like a fantasy effect or a Halloween effect or a Christmas effect or a liquid gold effect. Um, there's a vampire effect. Let's go with a sword. Sword? No, let's go with a scavenge. That's a kind of cool one. 
see and it puts that font with this effect and then you can make it a little bigger and then it will make your text bigger and you can make type in the title here and it will change that to be whatever you want and then just save this image and you have that text um so so here's one that uses the morpheus font um and the liquid gold effect and this is um an effect that's done with textstudio.com uh, another one that you can do to create titles all right so there you go a whole bunch of tips for how to make a free book cover with Adobe Express in just a few minutes. Or if you want to fiddle with it, you can spend hours on it. But you don't have to. I mean, this this is perfectly fine for like a short story or something, right? I mean, that's that's totally usable, as are like all of these. And they were all pretty quick to create. And like I said, I'm going to give you all the prompts in the description box below. So here I was playing with different fonts and different styles and um, different layouts. See how you can do that. Uh, again, the trick is, you know, space out the letters and the author name, play with the spacing and tighten up the title so the lines are closer together. All right. So there you go. Um, if you want more content like this, uh, you know, like, share, subscribe, blah, 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 and donate to Metastellar. We're currently accepting our fall submissions to October 31st. We've already had over 100, way over 100 submissions come in. We pay eight cents a word for short stories. And we have a fall submission cycle every October and a spring submission cycle every March. And... We have anthologies out. There we go, anthology, anthology. Uh, the second one just came out this summer. The second one just came out this summer. All right, okay. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the description box in the comments below or email me. My email address is in the description, okay? Thanks guys, see you next time. Bye-bye.